Hi, it's Jen and Tammy back with a Wooly Mug Mat series, and this time it's for September. I know. School houses, of course. <laughs> of course. One of our favorite things in apples. It's just so iconic. I love it. It is. We did that for the Wooly Mug Rug, rug <laughs> series. <laughs> now, those are kits. You know, we, we sell out of these kits and we just keep making we them. We keep making more. That's yeah, one of the best absolutely. parts about wool. I like is wool. Is <laughs> cotton fabric. You know, if you work with cotton fabric at all, you know that it's printed for a limited amount of time, then it's gone. It's gone. As long as they keep making sheep and dye. We're good to go. We're set, Tammy. <laughs> we're good. We're good. <laughs> so we're going to keep offering these to you as long as we possibly can. Now, with the, the mug rugs, you get two in your kit with the mug mats. Because they're larger, of course, the kit will make one. And... I love this hand dye. I love the hand dye. I just in here too. love that part of it. Yeah. Um, if you're new to the series, we started this several months ago. You're going to want to jump back into that series in the very first month, which was gosh, was it March? March. March. Oh my gosh! The so year is in February. <laughs> when we did the first one. Yes, because we're always going to bring those to you the month, month before, right. so you have a chance to make them so you can display it for that entire month exactly. coming up. Exactly. Um, so you'll want to, of course, download your two pages. You're looking for the Wooly Mug Map for September. Two pages, and each of them will have two pages. The tracing diagram, mm -hmm. where everything is reverse refusable applique, and then also your layout diagram, which I love that. Because a lot of times patterns only have the reverse refuse bath bouquet. Okay? That's right. They don't have the layout. Yeah. You don't know where to put your shapes. And we love using this new Fusa mat, which I found at market. I it's love wonderful. this product. Yeah. It works better with wool than anything I have found it does. before. Um, where it just releases the wool off of that without kind of grabbing onto it, which is kind of the experience I've had with some other um, applique pressing mats. So just like before, you'll need your heat and bond light or your favorite fusible applique product. We suggest the cut right heavy duty freezer paper because Look, do you see this kind of black yeah, haze? It's you know why that's on there? Because we keep Cause using we use it, it <laughs> every right. time. That's and right. it's super thick. Um, for this, of course, you'll be using the freezer paper and cutting out two of the ovals out of the black wool. Mm -hmm. We don't have any kind of fusible product on this no. because you love stitching through when it's the least resistance. Yeah, and I like that how foldable this yeah. is and how it's just so it's nice soft. to handle it. Definitely. Soft. Yeah. Um, so just like you would do with any fusible product, any kind of fusible applique you're going to do, heat and bond light. You'll be using your tracing diagram. I love my light box to see everything. Trace are on, are exactly on the lines, roughly cut around, ironing that to the back side of the wool, if yeah. there is a back side, yep. cutting it precisely on, on the line. And that's when I love to go ahead and use the light box, the applique uh, pressing mat, I guess I call mm -hmm. it the fusimat. Mm -hmm. mat. Of course, your diagram would be underneath here with your uh, light box turned on. And again, it's got this kind of tackiness. It does. I just love that. I don't know if this. It just like it doesn't move. It, it just like on to it. it's like stuck to it. I know. I love it's this. It's incredible. I can move things over to the pressing mat more readily. And they don't even shift. They don't shift. Exactly. I love it. Okay, so if that's new to you, be sure to go back to our very beginning first video of the Wooly Mug Mat series where we go into how to use an applique pressing mm -hmm. sheet. And the technique I use in that video, while it is a different applique pressing sheet, it's the same technique. Exactly. It's just exact this is one thing. works better for wool. And it has these air pockets. It just, I don't know how it works. I just know it works. It just works. That's so all we need to know. Once you get all of your shapes using an applique pressing sheet, the layout diagram and your light box down to the background. Tammy, that's when your magic jumps into action. The fun stitches yeah. happen. That's and I right. I know, again, this month you've got that's more right. beautiful thread we've got for two us. Two different thread sets. So talk, yep, us, I do. talk to us okay. about that. Very good. So, our first thread set is the Silky Petite Cotton Thread Set. We use that to whip stitch our shapes on here. Wonderful. You could also do that by machine. You could use the size 100 needle, goes right through there, you, if you don't want to do it by hand. Um, I used a little chenille needle to do that, just whipped it right up. We used these little chenille needles. Then once we got it all down, we gave it a good press, and now we are ready to begin embellishing, which is my fun 
this is the favorite part. Of course. <laughs> of course. So I marked my line at half an inch all the way around on this one. And I did start this one ahead of time because it's just a simple back stitch that mm. we're doing here. And I figured that we've already done a back stitch. Yep. So you didn't really need to see me do another back stitch. Okay. So I've already done that ahead of time. And we're going to do some lazy daisies for the leaves on here. And then I'm going to show you how to do a Chinese knot. Right. And if those stitches an are new to you, mm -hmm. what our goal, what Tammy's goal is, is each time we do a new mat, mat is mm -hmm. to teach us some new stitches. Something different. Right. So right. that's where the book comes in handy. I love and the previous book. videos. Go yes. back. Each video right. in this series, you have taught us something new in every single every one single of these. One. Mm -hmm. And so. That's true. Um, we can't be covering every single stitch of the videos we go forever. <laughs> That's right. So That's definitely right. use us as a resource right. um, whenever you want to do some of this beautiful stitching here. And just look at how each one has, the stitching just enhances it. I can envision it without the stitching, but this is kind of like frosting on a cake. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And your cup fits nicely right here yes. in between. Okay, it's so perfect. you've got some All new right. stitches for us today. I do. Okay, All right. so let's jump into that. Show okay. us how to do these beautiful new stitches. Perfect. All right, so we are gonna start with a dazzle thread. And I am going to use some thread magic on this because it Dazzle thread tends to twist and get a little It can knot up a little bit. Yeah, it starts twisting on you. And so that thread magic just kind of makes that thread. Look how it just kind of straightened it. It did straighten it, didn't it? Yes. Okay. It's a silicone product. I love that stuff. And one little thing of this oh, will last forever. you for almost, oh, just yeah. short of forever. A long time. <laughs> However long that is, <laughs> just that's short how long it lasts. Forever. <laughs> Okay, I like that. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Okay, here we go. So we're going to bring our needle to the front of our work like this. Bring our thread to the front. All right, and I'm going to make a loop. And when I make my loop, I want the thread that's coming out of the wool to be on top. So I'm going to pick up my loop and I'm going to turn it. And I'm going to twist it. All right, so now you can see my loop, and you can see how the thread coming out is indeed on top. I'm going to take my needle, and I'm going to slide it into my in the loop, and I'm going to go back down very close to where I came up. All right, you with me so far? We're going to tighten this up just a little bit. I want to leave a little tiny loop so it looks like an apple. We're going to pull our thread through. There it is, right there. See that? Let's do it one more time. And I just chained all these together as I went up. All right, here we go. We bring our thread to the front, like this. We make a loop, and naturally, I'm gonna turn my loop, just like that, so that my thread on top is my thread coming out of my wool. I'm going to put my needle back down close to where I came out and I'm going to tighten this loop up. You can tighten this loop all the way up into a little ball or you can leave it a little bit looser. That's what I did. I left it a little bit looser instead of pulling on it so much. That determines how big your loop is when you pull this thread through. Just like that. Isn't that cute? I love that. There we go. That is a Chinese knot. Okay, so after we finish our Chinese knots and all of our little leaves and everything over here, we're going to do black in the windows. And mm. I just did a straight stitch, did a little French knot for a doorknob, and a little stem stitch for my leaf. So cute. <laughs> so cute. Friction so pen, fast. you just draw it on. Friction pen, yep, you can draw it on if you like. Here's a question. Did yes. you just jump straight from here I to did. there? Yep. Because, you yep. know, when I kind of backstitch, it never is Sometimes perfectly straight. Sometimes it doesn't lay straight. Exactly. So you're just going to take a friction pen and draw this on here wherever you want your window to be. And just boom, up, boom. boom. Up, down. Love Absolutely. that. Love yes. that. Super simple. Okay. Super simple. And then, and then attach your backing. Yeah. Just like always. Yeah, exactly. Attach your backing yep. and go. When I got to these stitches, 
I think on the overhead camera you can see this. When I did those stitches, I would just go a little narrower, but I just kind of dodged around them. Mm, you see that? Right. Because they're out there, I didn't want that black to grab that stitch, so I just kind of was dodging around them as I go. And you can't see it because yeah. it just blends in exactly. perfectly. Exactly, because it's black. I know with the black thread, this is our thread set, but the mm -hmm. black is separate. We've said Correct. that before. Correct, it is. So I, yeah. You don't want 12 spools of black. And if you're running low or you're maybe using that other mm -hmm. projects, we have the black yes. available individually as well. Tammy, right. it's just amazing right. how just that sweet little detail. Isn't it's so fun? delicate and it's so pretty. It's so good. And I'm so enjoying this series. If you're enjoying this as well, we'd love to get feedback from you. Of course, we're always working on thinking of more series to bring you. If you Absolutely. have things you'd love to see us do on camera, please message us. Yeah. Let, us Let us give us know. some ideas. You we're bet. here for you. you and bet. we are super excited to bring next month's project to you. It's going to be here before you know it, Tammy. <laughs> Jack-o'-lanterns, October. All right. We'll see you for the Woolly Magnet <laughs> right. for October. Bye. Bye.